Okay, hi everyone. In this video, I'm trying to see if the myth about dynamic range due to the pixel density is actually true. I've got my D300 and my D700, which both have 12 megapixels, but they have different size sensors. And I'm taking a picture of exactly the same shot, same lighting, same time, same settings of uh, as in 14-bit fully uncompressed raw shots, um, and same focal length and all that type of stuff. We're going to see if there is a difference in the dynamic range that you can get from the different sensors. Okay, so that first shot was taken uh, with it on manual mode and it was meant to be right in the centre of the exposure. This time I'm going to increase the exposure by two stops and then afterwards I'm going to decrease the exposure by four stops effectively, but like two below the normal. Uh, to see when in editing, if we've got any control, any advantage from having a full frame to a, a crop sensor, sensor, crop sensor, sensor, cropped, whatever, um, uh, if we have any advantage in the dynamic range. Three, two, one. Okay, so let's take this back to the house and get them on the computer. Okay, so that's me back in the house, and I've got the photos up on uh, my uh, Lightroom here. Now I can't, I can't remember which one was the D seven hundred or which one was the D three hundred. So what I need to be doing is looking down at the details down here. Okay, so that's the D seven hundred, and that looks like it was kind of in the middle. And uh, let's see this one. What was this one? This one was D three hundred. Okay, so here are the first candidates. Um, this shot, looking out over the field, uh, both shot at 500 of, of, 500th of a second and f5.6 ISO 200 and on the other one, so exactly the same settings. Now what you will notice, interestingly, is that the histogram slightly changes. So straight away, even though I've synced everything in the camera, but also on uh, Lightroom afterwards, there is definitely something going on with the picture. Okay, let's go into the develop mode. Okay, so I've taken the, uh, just so you can see, taken the contrast down a bit, the brightness down a bit, um, and then taken the blacks down to zero and left it there. Uh, and if we go from one to the other, uh, okay, there's a slight change in position. Uh, so that might be what's changing the histogram, but is there much difference? Okay, what I can see definitely is this field out here. That looks good. In the next shot, looks totally blown out. Now, which one is which? Okay, so this is the blown out one, and this is with the D300. Okay, so the D300 a little bit blown out in that field. Meanwhile, the D700, less blown out in the field. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a uh, difference there. Yeah, so we just double check that the settings are both exactly the same. Yeah, so, okay, so D700 has proven that it's got a little bit of a better dynamic range there. Absolutely, without a doubt. Okay, so that's tiny amounts we're talking about. What about the kind of bigger, kind of more obvious amounts. So this is where we did the under exposing shots. Okay, so here's the next two shots. Uh, on the left, we have got the D300. On the right, we've got the D700. Okay, again, slight change in the kind of heights and dimension and all that kind of stuff. Um, and this was under exposed one. So let's see how much we can recover from each shot here. So let's say we really want to see a bit more of the details in the kind of shadowy areas here. So if I go to the develop mode, let's say I want to increase the exposure by, let's bring up to two stops. Sync the two photos. Okay, they're both doing pretty well. Yeah, we can see right into them. Let's see. Okay, so the D300 looks good and D700 also looks absolutely fine. Uh, in terms of what, since we've increased the exposure, which one, that's D D700. And this one is the D300, so can I see any difference? Oh, in fact, it almost seems like the D700 isn't as good as the D300 here. If you look over at this bit, this area here, there's a little bit less detail there. This one seems to have a little bit more detail, and that's the D300. Okay, so again, oh, yeah, 
there is a little bit of a difference, but it's very difficult to really see any difference there. Okay, now, what about when we've overexposed the shot? Let's see. Okay, so here we've got the shot again. Uh, on the left, we've got the D300. On the right, we've got the D700. Straight out of the camera, I can't really see much different. In fact, if I was to say anything, I'd say the left one, which is the D300, actually looks a little bit better. Uh, let's just check. We've checked all the develop settings. Yeah, that's the same. And yeah, both exactly the same. Okay, let's see what detail we can recover from this blown out stuff here. Now, theory says that the D700 with its bigger pixels should be able to recover more detail from the blown out shadows. Let's see. Okay, so let's bring the overall exposure down. Let's put the recovery up. Okay, and looking at the shot here, uh, can I tell much of a difference? Oh, struggling to see any additional recovery going on here. Um, let's... No, not really seeing anything. Okay, so this is with the D700, and this is the D300. 700, 300. 700, 300, 700, 300. No, okay, let's go a little bit further with the exposure details. Let's bring it right down to minus four recovery 95. Let's sync them both. Really not seeing any difference at all. So, now, for me, I've always like read other professional photographers and they've said that the fact that the D700 has a bigger sensor with the same number of pixels, which means they're bigger pixels, there's less pixel density, which should mean that there is a greater dynamic range. I really have to disagree with that. that there is a minute possibility of a, of a greater dynamic range when we're talking at, when we've got the exposure perfect. But when we're talking about, you know, really seeing any differences, I'm not seeing anything here at all. So the dynamic range theory, myth, as it were, that having a bigger sensor with less pixels, I don't know if that works for a dynamic range. Maybe ISO and noise, yes. Dynamic range, I'm not seeing it. Not seeing it at all. Well, I'll do is I'll stick these photos on the blog as well for you to have a closer look uh, at the shots yourselves uh, to make up your own mind. But yeah, anytime you hear somebody talk about dynamic range due to sensor size, take it with a pinch of salt. Hope it helps. Bye bye.